Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another thrilling discussion on all things well-being. My name is Dr. Kimberly Quinn on this lovely rainy day in northern Vermont, and I am here to uh, entertain you with a discussion on lowering the stress bar. And as you know, Minecraft, the main theme is about becoming the boss of your brain, which has everything to do with sort of acknowledging that thoughts come first, feelings come second, and then actions or behavior third. So therefore, we get a grip on our thoughts, we get a grip on our lives because our thoughts dictate our lives. This is just how it works. Okay, so I will start out right out of the gate saying that um, we are certainly doing a lot right in our society, no question. And that said, um, we've got some key things that are just absolutely ass backwards going on in our society. And, you know, we've been talking about through the last few episodes here and there about the happiness advantage or the, the formula for happiness, which, of course, came from Sean Aker. And that's and that's about um, we I mean, it definitely I, I definitely can can sort of remember I mean, not like actual you know, statements or whatever, but I, you know, just, I can, I remember thinking this all the way through, like up, you know, growing up, just hearing it from somewhere and probably reinforced by other wares. Right. And, um, it's not a word, right. Other wares. Okay. Somewhere. And then somewhere else, only lots of somewhere else's. And the thing is like, you know, we have, we've been drilled to think or drilled, drilled conditioned to think that, um, once I, once I'm successful, well, then I'll be happy when it's the exact opposite, we know this to be true. Once I become happy, only then will I be truly successful. And obviously how you define success, you know, may be different. Let's say authentic, we got relationships, financially secure, and maybe you're doing something amazing with creativity, whatever, but we got to be happy first, which is why we've been talking about being process-based, which uh, rather than outcome-based, you know, letting go of whatever, whatever bell you're ringing at the other end and just focusing on the present moment, being happy, doing your thing, doing what makes your heart sing, doing your passion, being happy will lead to success. That's how it goes. Okay. So next thing we have absolutely ass backwards is that we, uh, tend to look up to people who, have like an insane amount of stress that they're carrying around, you know, and these people like radiate these, you know, ginormous stress waves. And it's almost like a prestige thing. And I know when I hear, you know, ask somebody, how are you? And because I'm really stressed, I'm so busy. And the busy thing is a little bit of a pet peeve for me. Oh, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. It's that is like so annoying. I try to be conscious of not saying that myself because it's like, we're all busy. You're not busier. You know what I mean? It, we're all busy, but it, and, and not, but, and it's also like just this conditioned response because if we don't say we're busy, then you're a slacker. So it's, it's almost like in order to be accepted in the world, you got to be busy, stay busy, talk about being busy. Your busy has to be busy. And we're looking up to people who are talking about how much, how much stress they have and, and, I, to me, it's, I think it's become just a sort of societal habit that just needs to go. So, you know, one of my faves, John Kabat-Zinn, who's got like the mindfulness guru. Uh, there are lots of them out there, but he definitely, you know, kind of, I think most people would, 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 would name him as, uh, you know, like the pioneer in the, in the States anyway, for sure. And he has said this, that ironically, you know, because he's run the mindfulness-based stress reduction um, you know, workshops and full out, all out classes and done tons of presentations all over the country and world on mindfulness-based stress reduction. And he's talked about people, you know, um, originally trying to sign up for these, for, you know, stress reduction stuff to raise the bar to stress. Like, so I can take on even more and handle it better. And uh, Richard Carlson is another one who's the author of um, the Don't Sweat the Small Stuff series. And there's a bunch of these books and they're really good. But they're, and they're both, even though um, John Kabat-Zinn is more of the mindfulness guy, he and Richard are saying a similar thing because Richard Carlson uh, has run, in addition to the books, has run stress reduction workshops as well. And he talks about 
you know, you know, people showing up at the workshop and, you know, they're hoping for strategies so that they can toss even more balls in the air to juggle and, you know, handle it even better. And uh, Richard Carlson specifically talks about, you know, our, our current level of stress, whatever your current level of stress is, he says it's going to be like exactly that of your tolerance to stress because we tend to just stay where that bar is. You know, people will say, I can handle lots of stress. And, you know, and those people say, who's saying, I can handle a lot. I'm a, all well, the multitasking thing I get into in a second because that's not even real, but I can handle a lot of stress. Those t- people who say that consistently will also consistently be under a lot of stress because it's also what they're attracting, especially if they're if they're actually verbalizing it so the rest of us can hear it. They're they're attracting it at like a mega level versus just thinking, oh, I'm so stressed, oh, I'm so stressed, and we just attract, attract, attract more stress because like attracts like, right? We've talked about that with other things. If you're talking about all your stress, thinking about all your stress, being afraid of all your stress, what could happen to your heart and all the rest of it, you're going to attract more stress. It's just how the universe works. So subconsciously so speaking, you know, somebody's trying to raise their tolerance to stress, which sometimes is, un, is under the disguise of people saying, oh, I want, to, I want to learn how to manage my stress better. Often what that means is raise the tolerance to stress. So when we're, when we're, when we're doing that, we're actually inviting energy-wise, we're inviting more responsibilities, more tasks, more confusion, more overwhelm, that's key, more overwhelm until our now new level of stress matches what our toler- where the bar is set for our tolerance to stress. Oh, and I just got a, a total squirrel moment because I was listening to Oprah. You know how much I love Oprah. We are terrific friends. She just isn't aware, but hopefully I'm manifesting her because I want to meet her one day. I was listening to a really short thing. It was like three minutes, five minutes, I don't know, short. And she was talking about listening to the whispers before they, you know, come into, turn into bricks, right? Because our lives are constantly speaking to us. They're constantly talking to us. There's this internal conversation, even if it's not as clear as like, you know, you can hear my voice now. There's a conversation and we're, we're aware of it on some level. And Oprah talks about listening to the whispers before they turn into bricks. So example with this, I really did just think of this at this minute. If, you know, our mind is whispering, this is too much, this is too much. And we ignore that. We all know how, what kind of bricks that, that can turn into, right? Heart attack, stroke, even along the way to that's like extreme. On the way to that, it's just being miserable cranky, irritable, not that fun, much fun to be around, not uh, all that effective as a partner, parent, sibling, um, you know, and in the job, you know, p- workplace, not being as effective, just being a, being a prickly pear. Uh, you know, we know where that, where that goes in the middle. And then there's the whole extreme where it turns into, you know, something health related. And her talk wasn't specifically that it was listening to whispers in your life in general, because it is true. Think about it. We have a constant, you know, subconscious conversation going on with ourselves. And, you know, the brain is awake 24 seven, right? 24 seven, the brain is on. And so there's these conversations are rolling right through us, whether we're aware of it or not. So it's very, very important to tune in to those whispers. Okay. So in the, with, as far as the whisper thing in regard to lowering the stress bar, remember the stress we take on is going to match the bar. So it makes very good sense to actually lower the bar. Think about what sense this makes. It does make, it's, it, this is very valuable in, in information as far as one's own well-being and learning to manage this better before things get out of your control. And then as far as the out of control thing goes, there are also some people who are going to keep the bar out, uh, out of control, mostly not being aware of it, but are those people get a real charge when this they're in a, in a state of, of chaos and they're taking on so much and they kind of operate at that level. Things are a mess, but there's payoff in it because here's the thing. As human beings, we don't do anything unless there's payoff in it. It doesn't have to be positive, just like people can be um, getting payoff out of, a, out of an abusive relationship because it's what they're used to from their growing up as a child or whatever it is. We can become comfortable with having a high bar for stress and chaos and being out of control, even though it's that is horrific for one's well-being, mentally, physically, spiritually. 
So here's the thing. When you start, when you sort of begin to notice, you know, really actively notice the, really what we're talking about is anxiety, because quite honestly, we, I'm using the word stress kind of in and out here. Stressors are actually external. So what we're really talking about is anxiety, because anxiety is the response to external stressors, right? So anxiety is a, is a mental and physiological response to, to, to something, whether it's real, quote unquote, in the sense that other people can see it, whether it's real to us, we create it in our heads. It doesn't matter because the, the response is going to be similar because the brain doesn't know the difference. So it's all real to us is the point, whether, you know, you're, you're sitting on your, your couch completely safe, but you're all amped up at death com four because of what's going through your head. It's all real, all real. And whether somebody's following you around, ready to mug you. So the brain does not know the difference. So as far as our own stress, when we feel our mind moving too quickly. And for me, that's, you know, I'm fast in general. So that's, um, you know, presents a little bit of a challenge when you, when you feel your mind moving faster than what's really feeling good. Let's not even say comfortable. Cause that's a word. We just talked about it that you can be comfortable with stuff that's not healthy. So let's say you feel your thoughts moving at a, at a, at a rate that's just not good. Something's kind of, you know, alerting you like bing, 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 pay attention, pay attention. That means pay attention. So when you feel your mind going too fast, that means it's time to, take a step back. And if you can physically take a step back, you know, go for a walk, step out of the current, like we've talked about in other ways. If you're at a, a thing like a social thing or work and you, you might have to you know step into a break room or even a restroom, anything, shut the stall, even if that's what it takes to get away from it, to get your bearings, to really get centered. And you know what a fan of mindfulness I am. So if you can, you know, take even one minute, one sixty seconds, Okay, to try to get your bearings and listen to that whisper, as Oprah says, this is too much. And it doesn't have to be too much on somebody else's scale. The only scale that matters is your scale, you know, because we want to prevent that internal toxic dialogue of, you know, what's the matter with me? You know, so-and-so in the meeting only said this, and all of a sudden I felt my chest get tight. Well, if your chest got tight, your chest got tight. It doesn't just matter if somebody said, can you pass me a napkin? You know, if that somehow sent you sailing because it was the one thing that just tipped the iceberg, then you need to zone, you know, hone in on that your iceberg has been tipped and that we need to really, you know, you and your whisper need to really, really kind of reevaluate how to step out of the current and lower the bar to stress. And if your schedule is out of hand, which I think many schedules in the U.S. are out of hand, this is a, a, a time to, to really, you know, get out the pen and paper and figure out, you know, what can go. And I actually, I just did a workshop recently at Champlain on practicing self-care. And part of it, I forget, I got to a certain slide and it was making a not to-do list. So you can, this is easy. You don't even have to create it. Just look at your to-do list and pick one thing that can go. Because more than likely, something can go. There's no question. So pick in with your schedule, filter this stuff out. What is absolutely essential to do today and then slice something right off of there. And then remember what we talked about. I think it was yesterday. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Um, like what I say to myself pretty much every day, if there's just something rolling across my mind, maybe it's something in a relationship or who knows what or something with the house and I got to call the chimney guy to clean, whatever. And I don't have to, I don't have to have all of it solved on this day. I don't have to solve this person's that or that person's this or my own this. I don't have to solve all of this in one day, right? The world will continue to spin. We know that. So the not to do list, sl slice something off and remind yourself that there are only so many hours in this day and make it doable, make it doable, lower your bar to stress. And then uh, Richard Carlson sums it up with this. He says, there's no need to worry that you won't get it all done. When your mind is clear and peaceful and your stress level is reduced, you'll be more effective and you'll have more fun. We've talked about this in various episodes. This is not a freaking dress rehearsal. As far as we know, this is it. Who knows? We come back as an iguana and do something cool like that. Who knows? But as far as we know, you know, there's no guarantee that, that this is, this isn't, this is, this isn't the big game. We think this is the big game. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is the real deal. 
And then he says, as you lower your tolerance to stress, you will find you'll have far less stress to handle. Remember, your stress will equal, equal to where the bar where the bar is for you. So again, he says, as you lower your stress, you'll find you have far less stress to, far less stress to handle, as well as creative ideas for handling the stress that is left over. This is because when we uh, limit or minimize our to do our to do lists, our tasks, and our mental responsibilities. That's important. We're not just you know listing, crossing off, take out the garbage, which is good, but our mental stuff we carry around with us. When we cross this stuff out, it's kind of like cleaning out an attic, and we create more white space to actually be creative to enjoy our lives. Um, this is when we get also get flooded with like really cool, cool, innovative ideas, and mostly just to enjoy ourselves and have fun. So clearing out the mind attic is also sort of a part of mindfulness because it keeps us with less mind with less mind clutter. We are more able to be present. So all that said, today, lower your bar to stress. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from Northern Vermont. Have a mindful day. So here's what's important here. Remember what we said earlier is that your level of stress is more than likely going to equal what your threshold or bar for stress is. Therefore, logically speaking, it make it makes sense to lower the bar to stress. Lower your bar to stress. So think of it like, you know, catching a s- snowball rolling down a hill while it's still small. That's what Richard Carlson says. While it's because stuff that's small is more manageable. We also, you know, we can take a look at it, you know, step away. Okay, that can go, this can go. It's manageable. We want to catch it before it like rolls into something as large as Mount Everest because then that sort of tsunami of overwhelm you know rolls over us and and that just causes you know as we know it as we know what complete overwhelm feels like just massive stress which is what we're trying to avoid